Hey everyone, Nick Dierbert is here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're talking about how to extend a simple Excel model to add basic iteration. This is part of our segment on getting started on Python and Excel where we're building out a basic retirement model with both tools. So uh, looking at how we would add this iteration. So here I'm going to start from what we had from the prior video where we built out this basic Excel model to get the years to retirement uh, based off of these inputs. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, copy it to a new sheet. Um, and then we can call this, uh, you know, model with iteration. So uh, here, let's look at, say, three different interest rates and what's the years to retirement for each one of those rates. Um, and we want to be sure to be able to do this without having to retype uh, any formulas or copy paste or anything like that. Uh, we want to be able to take the same formula that we've written and just apply it to multiple different inputs. And, you know, with such a simple calculation, it doesn't make a big difference. But once you're, you know, running an entire complicated model here, uh, you're definitely not going to want to copy your model multiple times. That becomes a huge maintenance nightmare. Um, and so iteration is important. So we want to look at a couple other interest rates. So let's say, you know, we want to also look at 6 and 7%. Um, of course, you know, you would want to update the formatting so it can capture all of this. Um, but I'm just going to leave that as an exercise for you on your own. So we don't have to spend time with it here. Um, now we want to take this years to retirement calculation and apply that to not only the 5% rate, but also the 6 and 7% rate. Um, so the first thing you might think to do, uh, you know, I've already mentioned how uh, iteration in Excel, you drag the formula, right? And so you can see, you know, on this box, you can see that this bottom right corner, that box there has, uh, you know, a larger corner. And you can see the cursor changes uh, to this other one when I go over that. And that's signifying that you're able to drag it. Um, so you just click that and hold and drag it. And then you can go in, uh, you know, whatever direction you want from there. So, you know, your your thought here might be just, okay, let's just drag it over. And uh, then we'll get the calculation again for the other inputs. And to some extent, that's true. Uh, but you'll see the issue here, right? We can see that the reference for the interest rate indeed moved over as we wanted it to. But the uh, reference for desired cash and annual cash save also moved over even though we only have a single desired cash and annual cash saved and so one way you might think to solve this is okay well i'll just you know repeat these numbers uh you know in each one and then it should work right and uh <laughs> and it's close to working you know if this was a hard-coded number that would have worked but again this faced the same problem right this was actually a calculation uh and so that also dragged over but let's just say you know we had fifteen thousand in here okay now it is working uh but what if you want to update the desired cash now it's you know 1.6 million oh wait that only updated the one calculation that didn't update the others uh, and so there's definitely issues with, with this approach, plus it just looks repetitive. Um, so the solution to this is uh, to use fixed references. So by uh, you know carefully picking which references should be fixed, which should be relative, and you know if you're uh, depending on the situation, you can fix just in one direction on the row or the column. Uh, we'll get into that more as the course goes on. But uh, for now, we can just think about fixed or relative. So the fixed reference is not going to move as you drag the calculation while the relative reference will. Um, and so you want to make all those changes to your formula before you go and drag it. Um, so if we click into the formula, we again you know, see those three references here highlighted in the same colors 
in the formula bar here. Um, and we want to then not fix the interest rate, but we do want to fix the desired cash and the annual cash saved. Um, so we're gonna leave the interest rate alone and we're gonna come over here to the annual cash saved and the way that you can fix the inputs. So on Windows, uh, it's the F4 key and you'll see when I press that, I now have dollar signs in front of the B and in front of the 8. That means it is a completely fixed reference. Then if I hit F4 again, you'll see now the dollar sign is just in front of the 8. That means that it's fixed on the on the row, but not on the column. That means it will move right and left, but it will not move up and down. And then hit it again. Now we have fixed on the column. Uh, oops, we have fixed on the column. Uh, but not on the row. So now it would move up and down, but it would not move left or right. And then you hit F4 again, and you're back to just the regular relative reference. And for Mac users, uh, it's Command T gets you the same thing as F4 on Windows. Um, and if you forget the key or you can't figure it out or it doesn't work on your system or something, you can always just type the dollar signs. It's not you know, quite as convenient, uh, but it does work. It'll do the exact same thing as the F4 command T keys. Um, so then coming over to the uh, desired cache, we're gonna also fix that as well. And for both, we're just doing completely fixed uh, references, you know, fixed just on the column would have worked as well. Uh, but here, uh, it doesn't matter which one we choose for this purpose. So now, uh, interest rate, relative, desired cash, and annual cash saved are fixed. So I hit enter. Uh, you can see the original number did not change, but now we can drag this over and we can see we get the actual results. And when we click into what happened, we can see the interest rate indeed moved over while the desired cash and annual cash save stayed where they are because those are fixed references. So, you know, with this kind of technique, we can repeat the same calculation uh, for a bunch of different inputs in Excel uh, to be able to uh, look at a bunch of different outcomes from our model. And then next time we're going to come back to do the same thing with our Python model. So thanks for listening and see you next time.